So in video three, I will introduce a spiritual practice, as I've, I, and, and uh, each day it will be a different practice derived from uh, Sir John's book. And um, the practice for today can be stated simply as become aware of our place in divine affin infinity. Today we want to try to learn how to become aware of our place in divine uh, infinity. And when you think about that, and we think about perhaps a, an ordinary humdrum day that we might be having, if you ever have any humdrum days, that might seem like an extraordinary claim to think of our place in divine infinity. And that's exactly what today I'd like to try to do, is to remind us of who we actually are, according to the great spiritual traditions of the world. And humdrumness is nothing of who we really are. Actually, we are uh, expressions of the deepest consciousness, the deepest truth of life. And uh, we can be forgiven if we forget that on a daily basis. But the purpose of spirituality is to call us back, to uh, call us in remembrance back to, to our, our real selves. Um, and uh, so there are uh, infinite numbers of ways of trying to uh, enter into this uh, awareness of our uh, place in divine affinity, infinity. And for Sir John, it was prayer. As anyone who knew him, and I didn't know him personally, but I have read much about him over the last uh, six or eight months, um, he placed a great emphasis up upon prayer. And as uh, one writer said, his love of prayer gave him an easy familiarity with it. Now, I know that not everybody who's listening to me may be comfortable with the word prayer, and that's okay. Um, factor out, filter out any associations you may have by using a different word. You can use the word meditation or spirituality. Because the two practices I mentioned in the last video are essential to real prayer as well. And that is that we focus our minds, our attention upon something, something deep and profound, a sacred image, a sacred expression, a phrase from a scripture or a spiritual writing, an image of a saint, an image, an image of, a, of a great teacher, and if your tradition allows, perhaps the image of, of deity, if your tradition doesn't allow, uh, upon just the majesty of the divine life, perhaps some attribute of the divine. If you're not from a theistic tradition, you allow your awareness to stay with the breath until your consciousness becomes still, as it will in the other practices. And then this immense background radiance, this immense background consciousness of happiness, of bliss, of immortal life starts to touch your everyday humdrum mentality or mind. That's where spirituality starts to become real. Um, and so our practice today is to try to contact that. And uh, uh, John Templeton called upon many different practices in the book, but one that he referred to on a number of occasions comes from the Jewish tradition. Um, and uh, in the Talmud, uh, it was written that prayer is the service of the heart. Uh, the rabbi suggested an answer to the question, what is prayer? Prayer is the service of the heart. And so wonderfully eloquent and elegant expression for what prayer is about. It's the service to God of our hearts, to use the language of a theistic tradition. But we, we can also just think uh, of our stilled hearts as the place in which we encounter directly the, uh, the ultimate truths of life or divine consciousness, if you're comfortable with that language. And in order to uh, find our way to that place, uh, Sir John calls us uh, to enter into a silent place of wisdom and peace. Now, this is a theme that will emerge in the spiritual practices. It's essential if we're going to begin practicing or deepen our practice of spirituality that we find some place of quiet quietness, of quietude. And that can be hard to do, as, even if we have a quiet place. And so we need to create a, a barrier or a boundary between our everyday uh, lives and our everyday selves and this special spiritual sanctuary, this cave of the heart, as the Upanishads expressed it. 
We need to find a boundary, a, a point that marks sacredness. This is a sacred moment. This is a sacred hour. And one way to do it, of course, is to, uh, you can say a prayer, and uh, Sir John's favorite prayers were quite familiar to people of some traditions of, of, of uh, uh, for the, these words will, will, will be very meaningful to some, but not to others, thy will be done. That's a very, a very traditional, very Christian expression. But we could also, he also wrote that this, ha this attempt can help, and this sounds much more like Buddhism or like mindfulness meditation, that this approach helps empty the mind of all preconceptions. This is essential. This is, this is where we need that boundary between our everyday minds with all of their worries and fears and anxieties and hopes and exhilaration and all of that. And we're completely familiar with how our minds are constantly like ping pong balls banging off the walls. We need to get away from that and find a place of inner quietness where that perception, and I'll continue to quote now, where our minds emptied of all preconceptions, we give ourselves more completely to our perception of divine guidance. So let's imagine then we found a quiet place. Perhaps we have found our place of quietness. And one way, one way of trying to still the mind is not to just try to stop it. That will not work. That will not work. But we have to do this more gently. So perhaps we can imagine, we can see, close our eyes, and with the eye, with some kind of inner seeing, whatever that is, that witness consciousness, we can see that our minds are boiling over with whatever is, is, is of interest and of concern to us. Just imagine that we take our arms and we embrace our minds. And we raise that mind up towards a higher reality. And perhaps in doing so, you'll already experience a, a moment of calmness, if not a slight sense of detachment. Now, it may take a bit of doing for that to occur for you, especially if spirituality and spiritual practice is new for you. If it's not new for you, then you, you will already know how to do this on your own. And now that you've raised or you've put, if you will, you've embraced that, that bubbling over mind of yours and surrendered it or released it to a higher reality, you can also refuse to let yourself get caught up again for the next few minutes in worrying about these matters. For the next minute or so, no matter how difficult the circumstance may be, in this minute or so, you can at least right now experience what it's like to just surrender all of those thoughts to a higher reality. That kind of inner surrender, whether you're a theist, believe in a personal God or not, regardless of your background, even if you consider yourself secular and irreligious, this inner gesture of release can bring a great deal of calmness into your life. Now, there's lots of neuroscience these days that actually shows that meditation and prayer really do work in reducing stress and anxiety, there is a neuro, uh, there's a neurobiological signature, which perhaps we'll get into, that occurs whenever people enter into a deep state of consciousness. So meditation and prayer are real, at least in the sense that they change your brain and they can reduce your stress levels. All right, so if we just let these thoughts go and let them dissolve into space, and we give up chasing them at least for a few moments. Over time, if we practice this for a minute today, two minutes tomorrow, a minute the next day because we're busy, maybe five minutes, then 10 minutes, then 20 minutes, we may start to encounter that brightness to living that Sir John speaks about so eloquently. Now, you don't have to force yourself to stay in this place. Life is, pre life is filled with pressing concerns and we must move on. We don't need to add another list of oughts to our lives. I ought to meditate. I no, no, no. This should be about freedom, about happiness, about choice. We should not force ourselves to be spiritual. It should arise naturally within us. And the gesture, this gesture of surrendering, embracing our thoughts and allowing them to, if you will, float up to a higher reality, so that we can begin then to experience that brightness to living. This is 
the most refreshing of experiences. Mentally and physically, the benefits of this are now well documented scientifically, but the spiritual benefits are also immense because it is in this receptive, a higher level of consciousness that we then begin to uh, find the insights, the wisdom to change our lives for the better.